question asked very frequently sometimes in the astrological community what is the difference between digbala and exhortation so there are many people what they do is they use astrology like mathematics so in mathematics what happens 1 plus 1 is equal to 2 3 minus 1 is also equal to 2 so what they say is okay if a planet is debilitated but if it is in digbala the debilitation is cancelled but the question is is it and the other way around also they say that if a planet is you know, not strong according to the house at least the sign will mitigate the weakness but why do they make such statements because there is a lack of understanding in the fundamental principle of both these areas which means one thing has to do with the externals and the other thing has to do with internals and we cannot mix both of course there will be some level of coherence in that but it will not mitigate the effects all right so that's what we will discuss today in short hopefully about digbala and exaltation there you go if you are new to the channel and then please subscribe to it and if you like this video click the thumbs up and share it with somebody who is wanting to know the difference between digbala and exhortation and yes god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him so let's do a quick recap of digbala which planets get digbala where the agni tattva planets sun and mars they get digbala in the 10th house the planets jupiter and mercury akash and prithvi tattva they get you know digbala in the lagna the first house Vayu Tattva, Saturn, 7th house and Jala Tattva, Moon, Venus in the 4th house. That's the dictum which Parashara gives. Now, what's Digbala basically? Dig means direction, the four directions, Digbala. Bala means power. That means that when the planet is sitting in that house, Digbala is a concept of the house. It has nothing to do with the sign. All right. That means when a planet is sitting in a particular house and that house is in a particular direction because the four kendras represent the four directions, north, east, west, south. So it means when a particular planet is in that direction where it's supposed to get Digbala, it means that the tendency of that planet to pull you becomes very strong towards that direction. Or if we move towards that direction, we can utilize those traits very well because that is the direction where that planet can express itself very to, to the highest extent and what is exaltation what's the dignity dignity is calculated in many ways of course one of the ways is by seeing the sign where it is sitting all right so when you say that a planet is in good dignity it means it is in a good sign for that planet all right so for example for jupiter cancer is a great sign because it gets exalted but for mars it's not a great sign because it gets debilitated so there's no universal dictum that this zodiac sign is good or this zodiac sign is bad now take the example of capricorn mars gets exalted there but jupiter gets debilitated so what does it mean when you say a planet is exalted or debilitated? It simply means that the awareness is very high or very low. So that means if a planet is exalted, suppose somebody's 10th lord is exalted. Let's take an example. Any planet, any sign, any house. Then that means the person is very aware of his name fame status the person is very aware that he should be doing things in a way which will give him name and fame and that is why they say that in general exaltation is great because if you are aware of something you are also likely to do it but it's not guaranteed that you will do because there could be other planets which are hindering that planet or that planet could be conjunct some malefic which is which is not 
letting that planet behave behave naturally so now suppose a planet is in digbala but the planet is not in a great dignity which means the sign is not good it's like telling suppose take the example of mars suppose you know mars is in digbala you know <laughs> army officer police officer a person who is into sports so it means capricorn for example mars gets exalted in capricorn it's capricorn is a field it's a barren land so imagine a athlete who is running there in layman's terms but suppose he is not happy running there for some reason maybe he doesn't like the place or maybe he doesn't like the people around <laughs> so that is like a situation when a planet is in digbala but is not in good dignity digbala means the externals are 100% supporting the agenda of the planet but the sign will tell you how the planet is feeling how much awareness is there in that planet so it's like saying if a planet is in digbala then all the resources are available but suppose it is debilitated it means the person is not aware of how to use those resources so that is how you have to link exaltation or debilitation with digbala and there's another concept of dikshunya opposite of that house where the planet gets digbala is known as dikshunya now suppose a planet is in dikshunya but the planet is exalted so what this means it means that the planet is not externally in a circumstance where it can exert itself or where it should or where it is supposed to exert itself but the planet is highly aware of how to exert itself this could be a case where moon or venus is in the 10th house for example exalted i mean so that is how you have to differentiate so whenever you see a planet is in exaltation but it's debilitated don't do plus minus don't say oh it is exalted it is good debilitated uh, sorry it's digbala is good and uh, debilitation is bad so plus minus ch- cancel no your predictions will be cancelled <laughs> so when you see that a planet is in digbala but not in great dignity so for example suppose uh, somebody let's take the example of a virgo lagna So for a Virgo lagna, suppose Mars is in the tenth house. Now Mars is digbala in, gets digbali in the tenth house. That's the external situation. It's like saying Mars is in a perfect place to exert itself. But now, for Virgo, which is the tenth house, it is the sign of Gemini, and Mars is not a planet which is very comfortable in Gemini. So now, a planet is in digbala. but not in a great dignity which means it does not feel very happy about that sign so whenever the client is asking you or whenever your friend or your relative whose horoscope you are checking is asking you what will happen during my mars dasha you have to tell the person that you will get full opportunity to utilize the traits of mars but there can be confusion of what to do or you may not like the things which you should be doing now if you do that then you will see the results because that is what digbala is it gives you success in whichever direction you go okay so that that is how uh, you study what digbala is so take the example of a debilitated moon in the fourth house so that means your ascendant has to be in leo because for leo the fourth house is scorpio and moon gets debilitated there so moon is in digbala there but it is debilitated so that means it is in a position where it can exert because see what 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 is the fourth house fourth house is the house of satisfaction basically so 
if somebody has moon linked with the fourth house in a good way then it can mean the person can be very easily satisfied but now because it is debilitated it is not aware of the fact that it should be satisfied and the ultimate answer to this is you have to check the whole horoscope where is the flow of the horoscope happening how what is the strength of the entire horoscope what's the situation of sun moon the ascendant lord and the ascendant which planets are sitting in the ascendant or aspecting the ascendant that will tell you which which effect will be more so for example suppose somebody has sun and mars in the 10th house or not sun and mars suppose somebody has mars in the 10th house let's take the case of uh, virgo lagna somebody has mars in gemini for example in the 10th house now as i said it is in digbala but it's not highly aware because it's in gemini but suppose the entire horoscope is focusing in some other house like the 5th house then it will change the effects of that mars in gemini in the 10th house because now the entire horoscope is pulling him towards one direction and then when mars antar dasha comes or mahadasha then mars will pull him there so then you have to judge how the harmony will come about so for example suppose uh, the there are jala tattva planets like moon and venus if one of them is the ascendant lord or they are sitting in the ascendant then because mars is a fiery planet agni tattva so there is a clash in the kendra so then you have to see where the chart is flowing so by that you can know what exactly that planet in digbala will do not just blindly you say oh mars in 10th house is great for career but what if the person is not interested in career then he will be miserable with that placement now because it is in digbala he will get opportunities to exert himself in career but if the chart is not supporting it is not a good placement for god's sake and how do you know that the chart is not supporting well for that you have to see as i said the primary factors of the horoscope where sun moon and the ascendant lord is going because that will show the focus imagine if the entire focus of the person is on family or marriage or relationships or children then what will this mars in 10th house do it will simply create distress distress for him because it's like saying for example mars dasha is 7 years so then for that 7 years you have to completely focus on your career which you are not interested but now suppose mars is the ascendant lord if you are aries lagna then that's like a big task because now mars is also one of those key planets and the entire horoscope is focusing somewhere else then then the task increases so then you have to give more weightage to this mars in digbala because mars is one of those three prominent planets all right so therefore for a cancer or a leo it is very important to check sun and moon because they are uh, also the lord of the ascendant and one of sun and moon so for them the placements of these two planets sun and moon are very 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 crucial to determine which planets are in digbala and how they will feel how they will exert themselves how they will how they will want to express themselves that is how you will know so the next time you see something is some planet is in digbala then the first thing you should not do is if it is in a bad sign for that planet don't say it cancels out it doesn't work like that and the second thing is even if it is in a good dignity sign wise don't say that you are going to have the best period of your life do not say that because that can create a unnecessary hype in somebody's life and on the other hand if some planet is in dikshunya and it is exalted don't say that no 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 it's bad direction wise sign wise it is good so it will cancel out no don't say that and also do not say that your life will be ruined 
all right so for example if somebody has sun mars in the fourth house do, don't don't tell them that your life will be ruined because it's in dikshunya so see the house where the planet is placed then check the sign and then check the overall horoscope where the flow of the horoscope is happening that will tell you exactly how that person will feel about that digbala because it is not just important to have great things in life you should acknowledge also that there are great things in life right have you seen people they have so many things but they are miserable inside this is the reason now you know some serious astrology here so that's what happens people will see one placement and they'll make a judgment and then they're wondering okay my son uh, in 10th house the dasha started but nothing happened well maybe it happened but you were not interested why because you are interested in, you are interested in general in something else so that digbala in the 10th house may not uh, have uh, may not have a very big say in your life those six years of sun madasha but if suppose the entire horoscope is supporting that agenda of the 10th house the lagna lord is well placed in the 10th or in the 11th and the 10th lord is exalted or it is well placed in a kendra or a trikon and then sun mars is in the 10th house wow it's the best time to have in your career all right and of course whatever i have said will not tr hold true for all the 7 billion people it will depend on your existing horoscope your individual placements and the transits and your dashas dynamically all right so that is how you have to understand how to differentiate between digbala and exaltation or dikshunya or debilitation there you go if you are new then please like comment share and subscribe and if you want a consultation you could go down to my website to book a reading and yes god is there with you all the time just look to him and he will be there and next time you see digbala do not jump all right all the best